So the strategy that we had in problems one, two, and three, all we needed to do is follow this reverse the order of operations mentality, right? That was enough to completely unwrap the variable. But problem four has some other issues to deal with. What is it that makes problem four, what are some of the things that make it more challenging? Yeah. Okay, so there's a loaded phrase. Yes, we are going to have to combine like terms at some point. What do you mean by like terms? Where do you see like terms in this? Okay, so one of the things we notice is that there's more than one place where our variable appears in this equation, right? There's on the left-hand side a negative 5u. There's on the right-hand side, uh, well, there's a u inside of these parentheses, right? So at least the variable's in two different places. And before we can unwrap it and get it by itself on one side, we're going to have to do something that combines those two terms together, we hope. So that's one thing uh, that makes this especially challenging, is that our variable appears in more than one place. Uh, what else? Get rid of parentheses. Yeah. So we also have some, what we might think of as unsimplified arithmetic going on on the right-hand side of this equation. We've got some parentheses. Um, u minus 6, this quantity, is all being multiplied by negative 2, where the subtraction is happening before that multiplication. That's the, the, the purpose that those parentheses are serving here. Um, so we might have some simplification to do. Um, in fact, I'm going to recommend that that's the first step that we tackle, is we want to deal with, let's see if we can rewrite that expression in a way that doesn't use the parentheses on the right side. Anything else that makes number four especially more challenging than one through three? Just remember to change the signs. When you okay, right. So I would agree with that, too. So we talked about the fact that there is more than one place where the variable appears. There is unsimplified arithmetic on the right-hand side. And what's more, the two different places where the variable appears are actually on opposite sides of the equation. Right? I have a u on the right-hand side of the equal sign, but I also have another u on the left-hand side of the equal sign. And so we also have to navigate how do, we, how do we get those two quantities, those two terms that both have a u in them, how do we get them close enough to one another that we can actually combine them? Because right now, they're in two totally different worlds. Right? One of them is on the right-hand expression in this equation. The other one's in the left-hand expression in this equation. Uh, so until we can get them both on the same side of the equal sign, we can't combine them. So that's a pretty good list of the problems with this exercise that make it more challenging than the first three. Um, so we have to do something first to this equation before we can hope to use this unwrap the variable strategy. Um, our priority is going to be to try and get all instances of u, all of my u's, I want to get them all onto one side of the equation. Um, so we'll talk about how to do that, but we first have to deal with that parentheses problem. And how we'll deal with that is we'll first simplify each side of the equation completely. So I'm going to consider that to be the first step in our general strategy for how to solve an equation, is if there's any unsimplified algebra, uh, we should worry about that first and try to simplify completely. So the left-hand side, negative 5u minus 18, is there any way for me to simplify that? Can I write negative 5u minus 18 in any more efficient way? No. How do we know? Yes. Variables. Right. So we have two different uh, what we call terms. Um, so just to terminologically, uh, when two quantities are added together or subtracted from one another, that's when we use the word terms to describe them. So here I have two terms on the left-hand side of this equation. And one of those terms has a variable in it. The other one doesn't. Right? Negative 5u is a variable term. Negative 18 is a constant term. And because one's a variable, the other is not, they're not like terms. We can't combine those two terms together because we're adding two different kinds of currency to one another. It's like having a stack of $10 bills and a stack of $1 bills and then sort of trying to stack them all together and asking, how many $10 bills do I have? Well, we can't do that. How many $1 bills do I have in total? Well, they're not all $1 bills. Uh, so we can't really stack those two in the same place in the cash drawer in a way, right? They're, they're not like terms. Um, so we can't simplify the expression that's on the left any further than it already is. Um, what about the expression on the right? Negative 2 times the quantity u minus 6. Well, okay, so the u and the 6, the u and the minus 6 inside the parentheses are not like terms, so we can't simplify what's inside those parentheses any further. 
But there is a way for us to rewrite the expression on the right-hand side to avoid the use of parentheses. Yes, right. So here we use uh, the property that's called the distributive property of multiplication over addition. So the distributive property of multiplication, so the one that's multiplication outside of a quantity and addition or subtraction on the inside of the quantity, then I can apply the multiplication from the outside to each of the terms that's on the inside individually. So in other words, it would be the same thing to subtract u minus 6 and then multiply by negative 2 as it would be to multiply by negative 2 first on each of those two terms and then subtract the results. Okay. Um, one of the ways that I like to keep track of arithmetic like that, this is going to be a trope that we hang on to uh, as we go further and further into the semester. This kind of diagram is going to come up a lot. But I want to think about it like this. I'm multiplying by negative 2 a quantity that has the two terms, u and minus 6, in it. And so what I should get when I multiply is one product here from negative 2 times u. If I write negative 2 times u, what does that look like? Yeah, we can just leave out the, negative, uh, the, uh, the multiplication sign and just write it as negative 2u. Um, and then the second term, negative 2 times negative 6? Positive 12, right. And so when we complete this multiplication, the right-hand side of the equation, whoops, sorry, I left a stray mark here. The right-hand side of the equation becomes negative 2u plus 12. So I'm just going to take the liberty of, of rewriting that up here. So now our equation, after we simplify it, is negative 5u minus 18 equals, and then we have negative 2u plus 12. And this is the same equation as the one that we started with, but now the right-hand side no longer uses those parentheses as part of its uh, arithmetic. And so we've simplified the right-hand side now as completely as we can. Now that both sides are as simple as they're going to get, we still have the problem that we have the variable u residing on both sides of this equation. And before we go any further, we have to get all instances of that variable to one side rather than having them on both sides. So that's going to be step two in our strategy. This is the thing now that's preventing us from using the reverse order of <laughs> operations to get where we're going. So how do we solve that problem? How do we get these u's so that they're all on one side? OK. Yes, right. So here's, here's a place where, as a mathematician, I have to admit that I often think about this step the way that Paulo just said. We're thinking about it as we're just going to move one of these variable terms from one side of the equation to the other. The danger in thinking about it as a move is that often what will happen, and I think you were saying this a moment ago, often what will happen is you'll just picture in your mind's eye, oh, all we have to do is move the minus 2 over here, and then we're done. So what's the problem with that? What's the other step that, oops, this should say 2u, not just 2. What's the other step that you just told me about? change the positive to a plus. Right, right. So it's not simply a matter of moving. Nothing in algebra moves from one side of the equation to another. But instead, what we can do is we can, so what, what Paulo is saying is that this needs to be a plus here, right? Um, so rather than remembering, rather than remembering it the way that you just said, and again, the way that I usually think about it also, um, now is the time for us to think about why what's happening is happening. So nothing happens to an equation and preserves its balance unless it is an arithmetic operation that is identical on the left side as it is on the right side. So if I want, to, if I want this minus 2u to no longer be on the right side of the equation, what I want to do is I want to subtract it. Subtract negative 2u. Um, what is subtracting negative 2u the same as, by the way? What's an easier way to, uh, to think about that? Yeah, subtracting the negative is the same as adding the positive. So what we're going to think about is we're going to think about, instead of moving, we're going to think about adding 2u to the right side. But if I add 2u to the right side, what do I have to do on the left side? Add 2u, right. You can't do anything to one side unless you're also going to do it to the other. So if I add 2u on the right, I need to add 2u on the left. And now we can see why when that 
term gets, quote unquote, moved from the left side of the equation to the right, it appears on the other side with the opposite sign than it had on the other side. Right? So negative 5u plus 2u, I've written it here so that it, one is directly above the other, and I can just add what's negative 5u plus 2u. Just adding the coefficients, which is how we combine like terms, going back to Christina's point. Um, we combine the like terms, negative 5u and positive 2u, by adding their coefficients. Negative 5 plus 2, negative 3. Um, I still have minus 18. And on the right side, I still have my 12. But now, we've succeeded in getting all instances of our variable on one side. When I think about this step, I have sort of an incomplete sentence on the board on the left side here. Um, subtraction is always the tool to move variable terms from one side of the equation to the other. It is always a process of subtraction. Um, we will never, in this course, divide by anything that has a variable in it. We will only ever add or subtract things to both sides that have a variable in it. We're only ever going to divide or multiply by constants, numbers, never dividing by a variable, um, for reasons that will take us until deep into the semester to appreciate. Um, for now, um, subtraction works. It really does uh, every time. Make sure you're thinking that that's your tool to move, quote unquote, terms from one side of an equation to another. So we began by simplifying both sides of the equation completely. After they were simplified, we still had this problem that the variable lived on both sides of the equation. And we can't go any further towards getting the variable alone until we get them all the instances to one side, which we can do always by subtraction. So we subtracted negative 2u from both sides of the equation and ended up now with negative 3u minus 18 is equal to 12. And so now, what's the only thing left for us to do? The same thing that we did in problems one, two, and three. Right? Now it looks just like the problems that we started with. We just have to unwrap the variable. And so that's our end game. That's our step number three. That's going to finish our work. So from negative 3u minus 18 equals 12, what's the first step I want to take towards unwrapping that u? According to reversing the order of operations. Let's add 18, right? Do all the addition and subtraction that you can do to both sides until there's no more to be done. So on the left-hand side, negative 3u remains standing. But on the right side, 12 plus 18 gives me, I hope, 30. Um, OK, so now all our addition and subtraction is taken care of. What's the last thing to do? Divide everything by negative 3. By the way, here's another place where sometimes, depending on how many of these problems you've worked and uh, depending on how sort of much you've, you've built your muscle memory in a way into this, sometimes people look at this minus 3u and they'll say, well, minus, minus means subtraction, so shouldn't I be adding? Or sometimes they'll look at this and say, well, I know I can get rid of the 3 by dividing by 3, but what do I do with that minus sign? Um, don't forget that we can view this product here, minus 3u, rather than saying it in your head as minus 3u, Instead, when you're reading it, read it as negative 3u. Or better yet, negative 3 times u. Because then that reminds you, first of all, that it's multiplication that connects that number to the u. But second of all, that this little horizontal dash here is not indicating subtraction. It's indicating a negative number. And so pronouncing it in your head as negative makes a difference in how you remember how to do this last step. If you say minus, it's going to make you think of addition and subtraction, which is not what we want here. Um, instead, we want to undo the multiplication by dividing. That will leave us with u by itself. And on the right-hand side, what's 30 divided by negative 3? Negative 10. A positive divided by a negative, always being a negative. And that gives us our answer. So this is the problem. This number four is as complex as we're going to get with this process in our first run through the course material. When we come back for the second run through the material, we're going to have problems like number five and six on the back side of your page that involve fractions uh, and doing more arithmetic with fractions. Um, but we will get neck deep into that stuff um, in about four or five weeks from now.